xin phép giới thiệu giao diện của phòng hội thảo trực tuyến. Trước mắt quý thầy cô là giao diện của phòng hội thảo, gồm cấp 3 mục chính. Ở góc trái của màn hình là cửa sổ video. Tại đây quý thầy cô có thể nhìn thấy người thuyết trình, cũng như quý thầy cô đang nhìn thấy tôi. Chính giữa màn hình là khu vực trình chiếu slide thuyết trình của buổi hội thảo. Góc bên phải của màn hình là cửa sổ chat. Quý thầy cô có thể trao đổi với nhau, với người thuyết trình và cả với tôi nữa thông qua cửa sổ chat này. À, người thuyết trình một lát nữa đây cũng có thể đặt một số câu hỏi và quý thầy cô có thể tương tác thông qua cửa sổ chat này. Trong buổi hội thảo, người thuyết trình có thể đặt một số câu hỏi dưới dạng khảo sát. À, trên màn hình là một ví dụ. Khi câu hỏi khảo sát xuất hiện trên màn hình, quý thầy cô chỉ cần chọn câu trả lời phù hợp. Câu hỏi khảo sát có nhiều loại. Ở ví dụ đầu tiên trên màn hình, quý thầy cô có thể gõ câu trả lời ví dụ như là red, yellow hoặc là blue. Hoặc ở ví dụ thứ hai thì quý thầy cô chỉ cần bấm chọn một phương án trả lời. Nếu quý thầy cô đang sử dụng thiết bị di động để tham gia hội thảo trực tuyến, giao diện phòng hội thảo sẽ có một chút khác biệt so với màn hình máy tính. À, như trên hình này, để trò chuyện với người thuyết trình, hoặc tương tác với chúng tôi, quý thầy cô có thể chạm vào biểu tượng hội thoại như hình. Một lưu ý nho nhỏ, trong trường hợp người thuyết trình có gửi tài liệu handout, quý thầy cô sử dụng thiết bị di động sẽ không thể tải tài liệu được ngay lúc đó. Chúng tôi rất lấy làm tiếc vì sự bất tiện này. Tuy nhiên, sau buổi hội thảo, chúng tôi sẽ gửi file thuyết trình, bản ghi hình của buổi hội thảo, giấy chứng nhận cũng như các tài liệu tương ứng đến địa chỉ email mà quý thầy cô đã đăng ký. Do đó, mong quý thầy cô yên tâm tham dự hội thảo. À, trước khi buổi hội thảo bắt đầu chính thức, không biết quý thầy cô cần câu hỏi gì không ạ? À? À, trong suốt buổi hội thảo thì tôi vẫn online để hỗ trợ quý thầy cô và người thuyết trình. Do đó, quý thầy cô có bất kỳ câu hỏi nào đều có thể gửi thông tin à, qua cửa sổ chat bằng tiếng Anh hoặc tiếng Việt đều được. À, vậy chúng ta sẽ bắt đầu buổi hội thảo trực tuyến ngày hôm nay. Tôi xin trân trọng giới thiệu người thuyết trình hôm nay là Mark Richard. Ông là một nhà đào tạo hiện đang sống và làm việc tại Đài Loan với hơn 20 năm kinh nghiệm trong công tác giảng dạy và đào tạo tiếng Anh ở Đông Á và Châu Âu. Ông có kinh nghiệm giảng dạy cho tất cả các nhóm tuổi trong các trường học và cơ quan khác nhau. Hiện là quản lý dịch vụ giáo dục của nhà xuất bản Đại học Oxford, khu vực Châu Á. Ông thường xuyên trình bày tại các hội nghị TESO và là giảng viên được chứng nhận cho Học viện Giáo viên Oxford. Mark là một người rất có kinh nghiệm trong việc khơi gợi sự tò mò học hỏi trong học sinh, để từ đó các em tự suy nghĩ, tự học hỏi và phát triển. Ngày hôm nay, Mark sẽ chia sẻ về chủ đề Everyday English with Fluency Time thông qua bộ sách giáo khoa tiếng Anh lớp 1, Families and Friends National Edition. Xin mời Mark. Over to you now, Mark. Hello, teachers. Good morning to you. So first, I would like to check, can you see me and hear me? Excellent. Good. And you can see me. I've, I've gone a little bit dark, right? Just uh, I wasn't so dark before. Let me see if I can, I can make myself a little bit less dark. Oh, that's too much. OK. So we'll go with that. Okay, good. Yeah, I made the sun rise in front of me. <sighs> Not really. Okay, so um, it's, it's very nice to be with you again. Could you please let me know where in Vietnam you are by typing your, your city or your province into the chat window? So good morning to all of you. And I'm very curious. So Ho Chi Minh City, yeah, I expect a lot of you are, are there. But I'm curious if we get people from um, teachers from other provinces too. So far, it's Ho Chi Minh City or else Ho Chi Minh City has the fastest internet connection. So I'm seeing your answers first. Okay. Oh, we do have Long An province. Okay. This is very interesting for us to see. We are Canto. Right. I, I was there last year. Bon Ma Tuot. I don't know. Bacleo. I'm sure I went to Bacleo last year as well. Okay. Good. 
All right, interesting to see. Well, right now I'm I'm in the Oxford University Press office in Taipei in Taiwan. Okay, just uh, one hour ahead of you, time-wise. So today our topic is is fluency, and in particular we're going to focus on the everyday English with fluency lesson. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're going to do. Um, well, we're going to talk about fluency. What we're going to need is lots of input from you. So I have a question before we we get into talking about teaching fluency. So I'm, we're talking about speaking fluency in English. Could you please let me know the answers to this question you see here on the slide? What do students need in order to be fluent speakers of English? So I'll give you a clue. One answer could be they need some vocabulary, right? You need to have words and able to say something in English, but you need more. So we've got vocabulary from Annie there. Confidence, says someone. Practice in conversation. So if you need, yes, you need practice. Uh, there are structures. So good at using structures, which could be grammar structures or kind of typical phrases and sentences. Practice listening is a very, very good point there from Toy, because uh, you have to listen first before you can speak. Right, and if you think of babies in their mother tongue, and, uh, and growing up one, two years old, they hear a lot, don't they, before they can speak. So speaking skills. So I wonder what those speaking skills are, Trang. I wonder, what because we can break down speaking skills into into lots of different aspects. Vocabulary says Tran. Uh, someone says songs. It's very interesting uh, context. Each of you have said something very, very different, which I find very interesting. They don't need to worry about grammar. Just listen and imitate. That's interesting as well. Um, practice. OK, so there are, later we're going to see what students need. What are the building blocks for fluent speaking? OK, so I'm going to ask Sophia to just note down the answers. And please, you, please remember the answers you're seeing from your colleagues around Vietnam in the chat box. Uh, and we're going to come back to these later to answer this question, right? And that will come up in the methodology talk section. So we look forward to that. But uh, let's take a look at the agenda for this morning's webinar. So we're going to start with uh, an introduction to the Family and Friends series, as we see here. OK, so this is new for teachers in Vietnam, especially made for Vietnam and researched uh, from the previous edition by the Ministry of Education and Training in Vietnam. So uh, my job to start with is to show you what's the same in family and friends compared to the previous edition, but also more importantly, what's new and why. So we'll do that first. Then the next section will be the methodology talk. And today's methodology is all around fluency, speaking fluency. So we want to understand the methodology behind getting students to speak more fluently, more confidently, and also the methodology we've put into family and friends to help students speak more confidently, more fluently. Then we do the demonstration. So I will take a fluency time lesson. It's called Everyday English, right? Uh, and the main aim of this lesson is to get students listening and then speaking more fluently, give them that extra practice. So I'm going to walk you through a lesson so you see how it's structured. Uh, and then I'll give you some ideas of activities that you can use at each stage of the lesson for listening fluency and also for speaking fluency as well. OK, and that way, after this session, right, so before lunch this morning, you'll know much more about how fluency works in English and how fluency works in family and friends. Uh, and you'd also have very, very clear ideas for how you can plan and teach a fluency time everyday English lesson. And of course, we can have Q&A at the end. Now, with many of you attending, uh, you may have questions. Uh, honestly, I don't have time to look at a chat box because sometimes it goes like this. It's like watching The Matrix, you know, if you've seen that movie, just like just things moving up a screen. But um, my moderators uh, and the our my OUP ELT colleagues in Vietnam, they are helping me by taking your questions and putting them somewhere else. So at the end, hopefully I can answer some. OK, but also, by the way, uh, if you have questions, my colleagues in Vietnam can answer them, too. All right. So let's move on 
with the introduction. This, if you can, oh, let's do a kind of hands up here. So, um, so it, at the top of the the webinar, you have a kind of tool where you can put your hands up and things like that. So, can you put your hands up if you used or are using the previous edition of Family and Friends? So, have you ever used Family and Friends? So, I will be able to see you putting your hands up. Uh, you you cannot, but I can see that many of you are putting your hands up. Not all. Okay, good. And then hands down. And then let's type a, let's see, can you type yes into the chat box if you attended my webinar, which was a couple of weeks ago, like, was it? Yeah, and it was on, uh, it, what was it on? It, it was on teaching the whole child, the whole child approach. So yes, if you attended that. Okay, so this this will take 15 minutes, this introduction and, and new features overview. It's very similar to what you saw um, if you attended my session previously. Okay, but there are many teachers who didn't, so we have to share this. But everything else is, is completely fresh and new. Right, so let's go. Introduction and new features overview. Okay, so I'm going to run you through what is the same very quickly in family and friends and also what is new. Uh, now, the important thing to note is that Family and Friends National Edition and, uh, is an updated version of the very successful, very well-loved Family and Friends series. So, so this new edition is very much the same in terms of the engagement, the, most of the activities, the language that's covered, that's the same. But We've adapted Family and Friends to meet the new curriculum from the Ministry of Education and Training. So let's see what we've done to, to meet that. So first, the same, the characters are the same. So we still have the, the family and their friends, Tim, uh, Billy, Rosie, parents, grandparents. No new names for you to remember. I'm terrible at remembering names. I really am. I, I'm always embarrassed by how bad I am at remembering names. But you don't have to remember anything new. So, phew. okay. And also for students, if, if they're moving from the previous edition to the new uh, edition, it will seem familiar and comfortable to them. Okay, uh, next, what's the same is the unit structure. So lesson one is still words. Lesson two is grammar and song. Lesson three is sounds and letters. Lesson four is numbers. Lesson five, again, is sounds and letters. And lesson six is the story. OK, so what this means, that the unit structure is the same, the topics are the same is, uh, as the first edition. This means that for teachers and students, it's, it's going to be a very smooth transition from the previous edition to this one. And you can keep your lesson plans right, and keep using them for this edition. So that's less work for you if you keep your lesson plans, right, which I advise you to. Uh, next, what's new and why? So let's see. So, you know, a lot of the course is unchanged. It is a grammar based curriculum still um, with aligned skills practice, with the phonics practice. Uh, but what is new is, is this. Right. So I want to start off with the main reason for changes for the new edition. And it's simple. Vietnam's Ministry of Education for Education and Training have introduced a new English language curriculum. I hope you've, you're familiar with that. And we have made a new Family and Friends National Edition for Vietnam to meet that. OK, so the new curriculum in Vietnam focuses on improving Vietnamese children's English in three main areas. Number one is communicative competence. Communicative competence means having the ability to use English confidently, naturally, uh, to talk about real topics uh, so that you're just more confident at expressing yourself. Uh, and fluency is a big part of that. Okay, Speaking fluency is a big part of that. Uh, second, whole child development, Okay, or the whole child approach. So I talked about this in my previous webinar. So this is a more modern approach to teaching English and recognizes that students perform better because students are not just language learners, they're people. So we combine language with things like values, 21st century skills, uh, and other things uh, like physical development, for example, emotional development. And this is whole child development. OK, so it doesn't just help students to be more rounded people, but it actually helps them to be more interested in learning language, too. Okay, not everyone is interested in learning language, 
right? But uh, if, if people are learning other things about other subjects that they're interested in, about values through stories, well, that makes English more interesting. And then the third point is exam preparation. So uh, the curriculum and the exam practice materials in the new edition uh, place greater emphasis on, on helping students to achieve exam success. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so fluency time. This is the only slide I'm going to show you in this introduction because I'm going to tell you all about fluency time uh, later on. So there are two fluency time sessions in the student book and in each fluency time lesson you get, so sorry, there are two fluency time sections and in each section you get two lessons. Lesson one, Everyday English. That's my focus for today. You will see how you can teach Everyday English later. And the other one is CLIL, where students use English to learn and to talk about other subjects, for example, math. Uh, and math includes numbers, it includes shapes, things like that. Uh, so that's linking English to other subjects that students are studying. Now, I'm not focusing on that today, but I believe in July we will have a, an example of how you could teach a uh, fluency time CLIL session. Okay, so look out for that. More webinars coming your way. Uh, so, th so that's uh, fluency time, which is to help communicative competence. Next, the whole child approach, where we add in to family and friends. 21st century learning, culture, values, and involving parents. So this is new for the, the, this edition. The previous first edition already included aspects of the whole child approach, such as physical, like doing gestures, um, using your hands to shape letters correctly. Okay, that's all physical development, um, what uh, emotional development, that kind of thing. But we've added more in. Okay, so for example, 21st century learning, increasingly teachers uh, and educators generally believe that it's important not just to speak English, but when your, chil when your children, when your students and your children, uh, when they become adults, if they're using English, it's not just going to be using English, it's going to be thinking in English. If they're working um, and communicating in English, they'll have to solve problems in English. So we need to kind of put 21st century and, and skills in English together for that reason. So we have the four C's. So I covered these in the last session, but can you remember what the four C's are? And as I encourage you to type into the chat box, I will sip some coffee. I get a question about um, global citizens. Well, I covered the whole child development uh, about 10 days ago. By the way, we're going to cover it again. Uh, I think at the end of May. So um, let's see, Who, whoever asked the question about whole child development, attend the webinar in May and I'll answer your question. But generally, yes. All right. So it depends though what global citizens means, because uh, that's a big question. All right. But, but come to the 30th of May session. I think that's the date. Sophia can confirm. Uh, and I'll tell you more about that. So if communicative, all right, some of you are typing. Oh, creativity. Uh, content is very interesting, but it's not one of the four C's. Culture is very interesting, but it's not one of the four C's. So it's confident, um, but critical thinking, yes. Collab creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking. These are the four C's, okay? So it's very, very light in grade one, right? But you'll see it progress more clearly in the higher levels. But for level one, for example, critical thinking may be getting students to just think a bit more about things which are not really strictly to do with English, but maybe about math. So what shapes can you see in this picture? OK, so uh, let's move on. Culture. It's not one of the four C's. It's another C. So we have culture lessons at the back of the family and friends student book for the new edition. There are six culture lessons, one for each unit. So culture lessons focus on developing your students' knowledge of Vietnam's culture and other cultures, focusing on areas such as sports, traditions, special festiv uh, festivals. Okay, And this is important. We covered this uh, in the last session. But uh, learning about culture, if, if you want to communicate effectively, you need to understand someone's culture. If I imagine if I can speak Vietnamese perfectly, I wish, right? It 
doesn't mean I can communicate with you because maybe there'll be misunderstandings because I don't quite understand the culture if I come to Vietnam. You need language and cultural understanding for communication to work more effectively. Okay, so we have culture. We have values. So values is part of, of teaching the whole child because um, you know, a language student is not just a language student, they're a person and we treat them as a person. And so the, um, you know, we're teaching more than just a language student, we're teaching a whole child. So when you teach values, it helps students to be aware of how their good behavior or bad behavior can make other people around them feel happy or sad and also you know, affect the environment. Uh, so we have three values areas, community, health and hygiene, interacting with others. And these come out in the story lesson, which is lesson six. So if you attended my last session, I demonstrated how you can teach this lesson and bring out the values from the story. Now in this story, the value was share with others. So can you quickly tell me which area do you think share with others is about? Is it, does it relate to community, health and hygiene or interacting with others? What do you think? You can type C, H, or I for short. Yes, interacting with others. And Andy Allen, health and hygiene is particularly important at the moment. Okay, good. So we have values. And if you want to go even stronger on values, you, we have values worksheets, which you can give to students after you've, you've finished the student book page. And they can look examples of, oh, they're sharing with each other. Is this good? Is this bad? Oh, no, this boy's eating all the lollipops and this boy's sad. OK, uh, all right. So, oops, we can we can do that. And if he pressed the wrong button, <laughs> that's why I said, oops. OK, uh, and then um, finally, in um, the whole child approach is involving parents. So last time and uh, I showed you how we have materials to support you um, in your relationship with your students' parents to let them know what they can do to help their child learn English at home, even if they can't really speak any English. Parents can help you and you can show them what their children are studying with you. Okay, so um, again, we have a repeat session for uh, the whole child approach coming up and Sophia can post the details for that. If you missed that or you want to see it again, um, you know, please join that. It's an extra session we've put on. Okay, so that's what we've added into the new edition, 21st century learning, culture, the values, and involving parents. Okay, so let's move on. Hooray, yes, I nearly forgot. I never do this in photos, really, you know. Um, well, sometimes. Then there's always someone behind me who does that. Very naughty. Okay, uh, and then the third uh, improvement which the Ministry of Education and uh, Ministry for Education and Training in Vietnam uh, sought in the new edition is more support for exam preparation. So what we've done is we've amended or slightly changed the vocabulary and grammar syllabus of family and friends to support the Ministry of Education and Training's new curriculum. Okay, and also we've aligned the curriculum with international standardized exam requirements. So you can see that there. And you know, on the website, you can see that as well. And Sophia is going to give you a, a handout to download. And you'll get an email to you after the session if you, if you can't download it. OK, so um, you can take a look at how, for example, which level of family and friends correlates with these various exams. It's not just the, the curriculum changes, though. It's also lots, lots, lots more uh, printed resources for you. So extra practice materials from grade three upwards to help prepare students for Cambridge English, sorry, Cambridge English exams, TOEFL and the Pearson Test of English. OK, so look on, I believe, the website. Uh, for printed resources where you can practice language, but also, uh, you know, review for whichever test you choose, which is most important for you. So in summary, this course still includes, you know, it's the same course generally in terms of its attention to English and the skills, but there is a lot more support for test taking. As today's world, academic world, professional worlds, they simply require more testing. Okay, for English, not just for COVID-19 testing more and more popular. Okay, more teacher support in general. So we have a full color teacher's guide with step-by-step -step in, step instructions. So I'll, sh I'll show you, you know, what those steps look like in the demo lesson section. Uh, also importantly, we recognize that 
your students have different learning styles. Some learn more visually, some like to think and, and be quiet and just think by themselves. Some like to kind of talk immediately. So in our instructions and in our teaching guides, we have instructions for teaching students with different learning styles. And this will help you to reach all your students, to maximize all your different students' potential for learning in English or learning English. And we have lots more principal resources, okay? Apart from exam prep uh, handouts and worksheets, we have more unit worksheets, worksheets for most of the lessons in the student book, so extra practice. And for every single extra worksheet, uh, we have teaching notes, right, for everything to help you. Okay, uh, so we're coming to the end. We're going to look at differentiation. Uh, of course, there are lots and lots of different schools in Vietnam, and maybe different schools you know, they have a similar curriculum, but might want to do something a bit different and unique for themselves. So with family and friends, we allow you to use family and friends to course book at the center, but expand in any way you want. So if you want more skills practice, we have Oxford skills, which aligns perfectly with the levels for family and friends. OK, uh, and it gives students more practice at, for example, listening with speaking or reading with writing. If you want more grammar, um, more of a grammar focus, solid grammar emphasis. We have grammar friends, so that aligns, you know, perfectly with the, the, the units and family and friends. For vocabulary, Oxford Children's Picture Dictionary for Learners of English. And we also, for if you're into extensive reading or using stories or nonfiction for your students, you know, to read in the language they've learned, we, we can send you recommended graded readers charts okay which show you oh, if you're teaching this level or this unit of family and friends what's a reader which matches that in terms of a language in terms of a topic that kind of thing okay and there's a website for you to go to there all right um and differentiation can also mean within your class of students you well you know you teach different classes right some are stronger than others and within a class some students are stronger than others so we help you, okay? In every single teacher's guide, every single lesson, the teacher's notes will give you activities kind of below level for students who are weaker and need more support, at level and above level if students find it too easy and you need to challenge them more, okay? So we have that support for you. So we've covered what's the same, uh, what is new and why, and we'll wrap up this section. We'll close this section by reminding you why, okay? So we've adapted the materials, the content, the curriculum for family and friends to meet the new curriculum from the MOET, the Ministry of Education and Training in Vietnam. And, you know, the three main areas to focus on are improving Vietnamese students' communicative competence. We've got the whole child development to teach the whole child and exam preparation. Okay, and if you think about it, it comes down to this really. To give Vietnam, Vietnam students a better chance of succeeding in their futures. That's really what, you know, the, the MOET's new curriculum is all about, and, and we want to support that. Okay, um, components and resources. Sophia, my wonderful moderator, could you please um, let the, stu let the, the students? I'm thinking of teaching, aren't I? Can you please let the teachers here um, download the, the handout, right? And on the handout, it has the main page we'll use for my demo lesson later, but it also has information on the components, resources, things like this. Now, if you are attending on a mobile phone or a tablet, you might not see this this little handout box. If you're attending on a computer, you, you can click on the handout, download it, and in, you know, should take about 10 seconds, you'll see today's handout. If you don't see it, it's probably because you're using a laptop, um, you know, using a, you know, a phone or something. Uh, but never mind. Um, what we can do is, um, oh, yeah, well, Sophia's already told you the answer in the chat box, right? You can get, you can get, everything after the session. So please download that. And as you download it, I can quickly show you the, the website. So please go to the website 
Um, and what we have in the website is lots of things. For example, if you click on family and friends, this is grade one. Oh, you'll get videos. So I'm talking about fluency today, but you can get more information on fluency by watching the, the video. Uh, you can also get resources for teachers. So these are even more resources, different from the ones I've talked about so far. For example, all of the audio from the student book and the workbook, you can download the MP3 files. So, you know, hopefully our students will stay in school, but if there's another outbreak of COVID-19 or COVID-20 or something, you, you could use the MP3s to teach online, right? Also flashcards, posters, lesson plans, all sorts of things. And down here is a special resources. These are things we wanna, you know, hide away from students because it's answer keys, teacher notes, and more things like that. So please have a look at the website to, just to understand how you, there's lots of support there, there for you from Oxford University Press. Okay, done. Sophia, if you take away the handout box. <sighs> I've done a lot of talking now, but you know, you know a lot about the new edition now, so that's important. Oh, but I can relax a bit now. It's great. That's the hardest bit for me to do. So much information. Now I make you do all the work. <laughs> That's my favorite bit. I'm gonna. We're gonna have a tongue twister break. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. Um, if you're, by the way, if you're sitting at home with your family, um, they will think you're a bit crazy for the next three or four minutes. But never mind. So I, I would like you to say this tongue twister out loud three times and get faster each time like this i saw six silly sausages singing six silly songs i saw six silly sausages singing six silly songs i saw six silly sausages singing six silly songs <sighs> okay do it let me know when you've done it and then we can move on to the next tongue twister. Ready? Done. Good. I hope you did it well. Next. Red lorry, yellow lorry, red lorry, yellow lorry, red lorry, yellow lorry. Let's keep going. And done. And then we'll do one more. She sells seashells by the seashore. She, she sells seashells by the seashore, and so on. Ah, says Andy. Which one was that, Andy, that you found difficult? I'm interested to know, because Andy is, is British, like me. The lorry. And, and June. June is, a, is American, right? So that's interesting. Native speakers find that one the hardest. Now, can you type in the chat box, please? Which one did you find the hardest? So type number one for this, number two for red lorry, yellow lorry, and number three for she sells seashells by the seashore. Which one was the hardest? Was it one, two, or three? Interesting, so a mix there. I think for native speakers of English, the second one is, is probably the hardest. But it depends, uh, you know, native language can come in here. So yeah, two, three, a lot of you saying two there. Okay, so we're talking about uh, fluency today, right? And actually pronunciation and being able to speak something quickly, that's part of fluency. So tongue twisters are fun fluency practice. So, whoops, I, I jumped. So let's move on there. That's no more tongue twisters today. Uh, right, <sighs> but methodology time. So we're gonna talk about fluency. So here's the agenda, and this section will take about 25 minutes, I think. Okay, so we start with asking this question, what is fluency? Then why is fluency important? And then we end with how do we teach fluency? So we'll look at these three areas of, of teaching fluency. Okay, and uh, after this methodology talk, you'll have a, a deeper, pedagogical or methodological understanding of, of speaking fluency. And then I'll put all of the ideas into practice in the demonstration lesson, okay? So we always need, you know, and I, I know people love activities, but you've got to understand the, the, you know, 
why, the, where these activities come from in terms of the methods. So fluency. I went to the Oxford Learners Dictionaries website and I got this definition for fluency. Can you guess the three missing words? What are these words? So fluency, it's a noun and it has many meanings, but I chose the first one. The quality of being able to, or I'm going to do blank. The quality of being able to blank or blank a language, especially a foreign language, blanky and well. What do we think? Yes, yeah, so we have speak, use, and easily says. The first correct answer I saw with all three was, uh, I cannot pronounce his name, but I'll try anyway. Uh, Fong Hoon. All right, I know no Vietnamese, uh, apart from Gammon. All right, but there we go. So let's have a look. It is indeed speak or write a language, especially a foreign language, easily and well. So that's a, a general definition, right? Now, today we're going to focus on the ability to speak a foreign language fluently. We're not talking about writing today. So this is a dictionary definition, but for language teachers, we need a deeper definition. And so when we think about uh, fluency in, in terms of language teaching, we break down fluency into knowledge and skills. So what knowledge and what skills do we need? So if you look at these students in family and friends, they're having a conversation. Hello, nice to meet you. This is Bobby. This is Mario. Nice to meet you too. Right, they're speaking fluently. But you cannot expect students to just do that right away. What do they need to learn before they can produce this result of a fluent conversation? What knowledge and skills? So, so knowledge is easy. Language knowledge is, is basically grammar and vocabulary, right? And also may include common phrases. But what we're going to look at, so you need the language, but language is not enough. You need skills. So earlier at the beginning of the session, I asked you, what do fluent need, speak, uh, blah, blah, blah. what do students need? This is not a tongue twister mark. Okay, you should be able to say this quite easily. What do students need in order to be fluent speakers of English? Now, uh, let's see, Sophia, um, our, our marvelous moderator, I asked her earlier to, to kind of collect your answers from before. And Sophia, can, can we see what, what teachers across Vietnam said earlier? Yeah, so if you could scroll down that list, we go, oh, very nice. Vocabulary, so that's, that's true. Voc um, that's net language knowledge. They need practice, yes. Spe and then we have um, speaking and listening skills. All right, so actually what we need to do now is, is to understand what are some speaking fluency skills. All right, so all of your answers are correct, but we need to know more about these speaking skills. So, uh, Sophia, thank you for that. And we're gonna ask you to magically take those away. There they go. And let's move on. And here are speaking fluency skills, okay? Uh, so um, pronunciation. You could know a word in English, you could know how to read it, to write it, you could hear it, but if you cannot pronounce it correctly, then it's really difficult for anyone to understand what you're saying. So pronunciation includes the sound, or we say enunciation. What shape does your mouth need to make to get the right sound? All right, I, uh, s, z. All right, so you need to be able to, to it's, it, this is really a muscle thing, mouth muscles and tongue. What do you do to produce the right sounds and the air coming out? Okay, there we have uh, rhythm. Uh, so every language has its own rhythm. English is a stress timed language. I think Vietnamese is a syllable timed language, not sure. So they're, they're quite different. Uh, and then, um, so we have intonation. So intonation can be of the word, oh, you know, the emotion, and, and it also includes um, the stress. Syllable stress is very important. For example, this word here is not pronunciation or pronunciation. It's pronunciation. There's a stressed syllable, and we need to know that. Otherwise, we cannot speak fluently. If you say to me, oh, Mark, uh, what intonation did you use? You know, it's really difficult for me to understand um, 
we have to get the, the syllable stress and word stress right. Then we have word recognition. So in fluency, it means through first through listening, understanding if you hear a sentence like, a, what do you think the time is? Well, oh, I did not say, what do you think the time is? In, in English, we have we speak in fluently. We speak, we connect all the sounds together, right? What do you think the time is? So, but students have to be able to hear where one word ends and, and the next word starts. Then, so we have language chunks, so common phrases. So, if I'm, if you say to me, "Hi, Mark, how are you?" I want to say, "I'm fine, thank you." And you, I don't want to say, "I'm oh, fine." We need to learn these words together as a chunk, right? And then we have discourse. So discourse means understanding the conventions of a conversation. Um, for example, again, if you say to me, um, if you say to me, oh, hey, how are you? I need to be able to just know what I'm supposed to say in return. Oh, fine, thanks. Right. So that's discourse. So, oh, excuse me in a restaurant. Excuse me, is this chair taken? Uh, oh, no, please take it you know you need to know what to say next okay so speaking is very very difficult for children um, because at first students they just want to express themselves they can express themselves in their own language and then it can be very frustrating that they cannot express themselves in English so it can be very frustrating and it takes a long time to do that to build up that confidence then as students get older some of them begin to get shy and they might become reluctant to speak English in front of other other kids, other other children, because they might feel a bit embarrassed or shy or something like that. So speaking is tough, but speaking fluency is very important. Um, and I think there are studies showing that um, if if um, you you are seen or perceived to be a, a fluent speaker, you have um, it's not fair, but you have better chances of getting you know better paying jobs and things like that. So it is important to be seen to be a fluent speaker. All right, it, it's unfairly associated with in, intelligence. Um, sometimes there are people who are not good speakers and they're very, very smart and it, they're kind of unfairly judged. But unfortunately, or I, well, not unfortunately, but you know, fluent speakers have a big advantage in the world. Uh, and fluency is important because, you know, language humans develop language primarily to communicate with each other orally so it, just for the, the human experience it's the main reason we develop language is to speak with each other right and then children they enjoy communicating with each other children are very nosy about you know what toys other children have or what another child is doing or what another child did at the weekend. They love to find out about each other. Um, if, a, if a child can say something like a dialogue in another language, they feel confident, they feel that they can be maybe independent users of language. Um, if you have children speaking, hey, it's, it's a nice bit of energy, a bit of variety in a lesson. And of course, when you speak English, it helps students to memorize because as they speak, you know, it just gets more solid, language gets more solid in the brain. And, and they can almost hear themselves speak as well. So it helps language to be memorized. OK, so how do we teach fluency? Well, what we do is the first point is we need to know what the components of speaking fluency are. So I've told you they are um, language knowledge. So that's grammar, vocabulary, uh, phrases, right? So in, in everyday English, students will learn phrases. And they know grammar and vocabulary from the unit in general. But what we want to practice in fluency lessons are these aspects, these fluency skills. OK, right. So let's see how we do that. Oh, so I want to remind you that this is very, very important. Today, we are focusing on the fluency time lesson in family and friends. So that might give you the idea that, oh, this is the one, this is the lesson in the book where we train students speaking fluency. I wanted to tell you that every single lesson in family and friends uh, and in any lesson in any English class, I think, every single lesson includes fluency training, every single one, okay? So, uh, for example, when you are teaching lesson one in family and friends, which is words, what does, 
how do students improve their speaking fluency? Well, they listen and they repeat the words, the vocabulary, right? So they listen sandwich, sandwich. They repeat it. That's practicing the sound of a word, isn't it? And then after that, they chant the words. So maybe, you know, sandwich, sandwich, sandwich. And the stress is not, it's not sandwich, it's sandwich. Well, that's practicing the rhythm of the word. Okay, so, you know, every lesson is practicing fluency to some extent. Then you get in family and friends lessons Lessons three and lesson lessons three and five are sounds and letters. Well, students are learning what's phonics, right? But they they also listen and chant the sounds, b, 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 k, 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 right? And they, there's various exercises. And what does it say? The cat has lunch with a duck in a tub. So that's like ah, 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 ah. Again, the sounds and, and rhythm, okay, um, and word recognition as well. And then also you get songs. So singing is one of the best ways to practice speaking fluency because when you sing, what song? Um, let's say, um, I, what, what's a, a song that we know? Let's go Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I'm, I'm thinking of that because my daughter was singing it for half an hour last night instead of sleeping, which made me kind of tired for this morning. <sighs> Um, it was very, very fun to listen to, but I just wish she would go to sleep, you know. So she was singing, somewhere over the rainbow. So when you sing, you cannot sing somewhere over the, because you're not going to keep up with the, the song, right? You're going to sort of fall behind. You have to connect the sound somewhere over the rainbow, over the rainbow. It's all blended together. So songs force you to do what's called connected speech, all right, and knit words together. Okay, uh, a note to my daughter, just don't do that at 10 o'clock at night. All right, thank you. Okay, she's three, by the way, so I guess that's not unusual. Um, all right, so let's move on. Uh, so, uh, yes, oh, and of course, uh, four out of the six lessons, so that's lessons two, three, four, and five, they end with this let's talk activity. Why is this in the lesson? Because it shows you and shows students that the end result of all of these lessons is that students are able to say something, right? So fluency is the end product of every lesson in family and friends, okay? So just remember that, but okay, don't forget that. But now, from now on, let us concentrate on fluency time. So fluency time appears twice in the new edition of Family and Friends. Two sections, uh, first after unit three and then after unit six. And let's look in fluency time. So we have lesson one, which is everyday English, and lesson two, which is CLIL, all right? I, I, just a little bit about CLIL. In July, you'll see a demo lesson uh, webinar on, on teaching this lesson. But, but why is CLIL in fluency time? Because students, part of fluency is being able to talk about different subjects in English, okay? In, in, in brief, that's, that's the answer. But today, our focus is on everyday English, okay? So I'll quickly run you through, um, you know, what's behind, behind this everyday English uh, lesson. So the phrases that students learn, so we learn common everyday phrases, they're based on phrases that are in the Cambridge English examination syllabus alongside other phrases which are useful for daily life. Now if you teach uh, Cambridge English exams or you want your students to take them or your parents, your students' parents want them to take them, that's great, right? But if, you, if you're not interested in the Cambridge, Cambridge English examination syllabus, these phrases are still very useful for practical daily life. Okay, now how do we teach these phrases? In a meaningful context. One of you mentioned earlier, context is important, right? And that is true. In grades one and two, we have these mini stories. So we're using grade one today. Note, in grades three to five, we have videos. And what we do is practice new language, transitioning from being able to listen to the language in context first, then practicing it a bit more, and then saying it. Okay, so that's how the lesson works, and it has three parts. So you have exercise one, exercise two, exercise three. 
So exercise one, students listen and they point to the pictures as they listen. And then next they listen again and repeat very short, simple phrases. Then you move on to exercise two. Students listen to some different language, or it's, it's different examples of the same language, I should say. And they will point to the parts of the picture where they think the dialogues are happening. So there's four little mini dialogues and they have to kind of link them to what's going on in the picture. So again, that's context and understanding how the language is used in daily practical life. And then finally, students, you know, the lesson builds from listening into speaking where students practice phrases in pairs, practicing the context from exercise two. All right, practicing in that context. Okay, so all of this is in a teacher's guide. Uh, and this is how the lesson works. Start with listening. This is how we teach a fluency lesson. First, students have to be able to listen to the language, internalize it, understand the context before you can expect students to say it. All right, when you listen, students will listen, not just to what's being said, but how it's said, the rhythm, how the sounds connect together from one word to another the sounds of the words, the intonation. If you listen well and pay attention, then you can practice controlled speaking practice. So uh, when you have very, very young students at low levels, you need lots of controlled speaking practice. At higher levels, students can do more open, freer pair work speaking practice. But at, at grade one, we're going to do a lot of control practice, OK? So the students get the sounds, the rhythm, the intonation right. As someone said earlier, Practice, right? Practice makes perfect. And then we go to pair work speaking practice, which is a bit freer, and students can add in substitutions uh, and kind of use language in realistic, social, interactive settings. Okay, so all of these activities, we have activities for each session, and they have to be motivating. So that's the procedure. And now we've done the methodology talk, which is good. And we're about halfway through this morning's webinar uh, we, now we have a nice you know a nice amount of time about right to do the the uh, the demo lesson but it's very important that we get our foundations right we understand what fluency is we know why it's important and we know the the principles of how we teach fluency right we need to know what the fluency skills are uh, and then we understand the content in family and friends and if you understand the content, it's easier for you to teach, right? You know the intention behind the exercises. And we understand the general procedure of going from listening to controlled speaking practice to freer pair work practice. Okay, so we know the shape, right? We know the procedure. Next, let's add in activities for each stage of your lesson. Are you ready for the teaching demonstration? slash lesson walkthrough. Are you ready? I'm going to wait to see if you're ready. Yes, says Tran. I'm not ready. I need 10 seconds to sip some coffee, and then I will be ready. I encourage you to do the same. Join me, by the way. If you have a, a, a water or coffee or tea or milk tea or whatever drink you have, let's do this. Just a little mini break here. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. You can hold it. Well, you don't have a webcam on, but cheers. I imagine you all holding your cups up. You know, so I know in some countries we do this. That's in Taiwan, and you get a lot of this. Every time you drink in company, it's you have to make eye contact and do this. Do that again. Okay. I hope you all did that. Cheers. Yeah. Ah, I feel ready now. Good. Let us move. So, and Sophia, Sophia's going to help me, right? The biggest question is, um, are you ready? Am I ready? And is Sophia ready for, because she's going to, she's going to help me again this morning. She was so good helping me out in the last webinar uh, on the whole child approach. Um, I've given her even more to do this time, but just secretly, I know she enjoys it. You see, I know she'll have fun. Sophia says, yes, I'm ready. I'm glad none of you said I was born ready, 
because that would be just a bit too much. Okay, warmer. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much following the teacher's guide lesson notes, by the way. So here are the stages of a lesson that the teacher's guide lesson notes follow. So there's a very quick warm up, which is two minutes. Then there's a lead in act activity, which sets up kind of like help students to, to understand what they will study and why it's important. All right, so the lead in and fluency time is particularly important, I feel. Uh, so students think, oh, okay, we're gonna learn this and, and this is why it's important. Uh, then we have listen, point and say, exercise one, exercise two, exercise three. So let's start with our warmer. So, um, and you can use flashcards. So the warmer in the, in the teacher's guide is this. I'm gonna hold up, uh, in class it says it, you can use crayons, but I'm gonna do this. Okay, so. Oh, I, I'm gonna use these marker pens, right? Uh, I, again, I, I tried to take my daughter's crayons uh, this morning uh, and she would not let me so I just have to use these whiteboard markers I could see there would be tears and screaming so I thought I'll just use these okay so we uh, I would say to my class red black green blue everyone can you say these and you have to pretend you're my students and you can have again so where people watching you attending this webinar will think what's wrong with that person why are they shouting out colors in English? But we all understand why we're doing it, don't we? That's all that matters. So you ready? After me, red, you say it. Black. Green. Blue. Okay, now I'm gonna take one away. I'm not showing you. Can you tell me? What, what color's missing? What color's missing? And can you type into the chat box, please, which color is missing? It, obviously, in a normal class, your students would tell you the color, right? It is indeed green. <laughs> okay. I hope no one's watching in black and white, which I'm not sure that's, that's possible these days. Okay, let's go again. Uh, all right, and again. Oh, I have red, black, green, and blue. Let's take one away. What's missing? What's missing this time? And students would shout black. Very good. Okay, and you do something like that. All right, so that's the warm up. Very, very simple. Interestingly, though, you know, the, the warm up is designed for as an in class activity. Uh, and, you know, you get students saying the, the vocabulary. Uh, but it's, it's relatively simple. If you have a webcam or you can share a screen, you know, you, a lot of activities you can do online, right? Um, which is in COVID-19 something we, we have to be a little bit aware of at least. Okay, black like my coffee. That's exactly how I like my coffee, Andy. Right, so that's the warmer. Uh, let's see, do I want Sophia to do something? Let me just look at my notes. No, Sophia, I'll give you a bit of a break there. Of course, you could always add more colors to make it harder uh, each time each round you add another color so your students have to remember more okay next let's move on to the the lead-in and here i will uh, soon ask sophia to help so uh students i'm pretending to be the teacher okay students today you're going to learn some you're going to learn how to be polite in english how to be nice and say nice polite things now if i want you to give me a pen is this nice you you Give me the pen! Give me the pen now! Is that nice, everyone? Yes or no? No, it's, it's, that's right, it's not nice. What should I say? What would be a nice word to say if I want you to give me the pen? What should I say? Please, that's right, okay? And even if students say in Vietnamese, that's fine because they're, they're getting the concept of lesson here. Okay, very good. And um, if you give me, if, so I say, oh, um, the green pen, please. And when you give it to me, what should I say? If you give me something I ask for, thank you, that's absolutely right. So we're gonna to learn to be polite in English. But why, why should we? be polite why should I say please why should I say thank you because I can just say you give me the green pen now hmm. why should I be nice 
Why should I be polite? Better relationships. And if your students, you can help your students to say something like, well, how do you feel if I do this? Give me the pen. Huh. Do you feel happy or sad? Sad, right? But if I say please and thank you, how do you feel? Happy. So there's always ways to explain these concepts to students. And they get, okay, that's why we should be nice. This relates, by the way, to teaching the whole child in values, because how you behave and how you speak can affect how other people feel. All right. Okay, so that's what we're going to learn. So let's see. Uh, and then we can do a little demonstration with a student. So, uh, Sophia, if you turn your mic on, I have red, blue, green, and black. Uh, what color would you like? And you can say very simply, red, please, or blue, please, just like that. So, Sophia, mm -hmm. what color would you like? Blue, please. Here you go, Sophia. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, and I should say, here you are. And you say, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And then what color would you like now? Red, please. Here you are. Thank you. Okay. And then you can, so you can practice this with students and you can switch roles. Sophia, can I get a pen from you? Sure. If not, don't worry about it. I just wondered, uh, can I have a pen, please? Uh, let's see, red, please. Here you are. Thank you. Oh, wow. My, uh, OK, there we go. I've got one of my pens back. OK, so in class, you would do a little demonstration with a student. And so, you know, the lead in, we, we understand, OK, we, we see what we're going to do in this lesson. We see the, the objectives. So now we move on to exercise one. So um, students listen and point. Next day, listen and repeat the phrases. So if you can make this very, very simple. The simple method is to do this. First, look at the pictures and ask children what they can see. So what I've observed in many classes is teachers often say, oh, look at the picture, everyone. What do you see? And students give answers. All right. Next, play two parts of the track. So there's part one here and part two here uh, for children to first point and then repeat. So Sophia, could you play um, the track? It's was it track number 85, it says here. Uh, and by the way, if you downloaded the session handout, you can open this up and see it like A4 size. So and uh, we're going to point. So use your fingers and point as you listen. OK, Sophia, please play. L listening 85. Listen, point, and say. One. Blue, please. Two. Here you are, James. Thank you, Kate. OK, so it could be as simple as that. And, and if you're going to keep it simple in class, the first time you play the track, students are pointing just listening, and then maybe play it again, like one or two more times. And then the next time students can, uh, they can repeat. Okay, so often here you might pause the audio track, you know, blue please, and then students will say blue please, so you just do that, and so on, same for part two. And then you can invite confident pairs of children to act out the dialogue for class. So that's the basics, right? But now I'm gonna show you some more things you can do with this. So. Uh, first, um, I want to talk about how you can motivate students, all of your students, to focus on the pictures and get language from the pictures. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do something, right? For the purpose of this exercise, please just erase what you just heard. Because in class, I would do the following activity before students have heard the audio, okay? All right, so just, imagine, just pretend, you, just forget what you just heard, all right? I'm going to erase your memories for the last two minutes. And you go, oh, what happened to me? All right. So I, uh, let's see. So, you know, something I found from my teaching experience is that when I ask, when I say to students, OK, students, oh, turn, look at picture number one. What do you see? You know what happens in my class? And I want you to, to listen and see if this happens to you. Maybe there's silence. Maybe there's one student who says, 
balloon. And then that's it. And then I have to say, oh, okay, can you give me a long sentence? I see a balloon. I see a balloon. And I'm, I'm working so hard. And I say, oh, and something else. What else do you see? Oh, oh, who do you see? Who do you see? And then one student puts their hands up and says, you know, boy. And my students, they never say, I see a boy. And, I, and, and this happens. And you know what? Um, there's not much, um, not much information. Uh, students are... Okay, so we have a notice. Please don't put your personal information into the chat window. This is important. If you do, I understand why you might be doing it for good reasons, but sometimes this, if this happens in a webinar and someone clicks it, there, there can be malicious people in webinars. So do not share personal information in a public chat box. Okay, it's a webinar rule. Um, you, you can contact each other privately, but if you, if you do, um, I'm afraid the moderators will have to remove you from the webinar, okay? And this includes things like um, links to, to, to any kind of like forum, because we just don't know, right? We just don't know each other. Okay, so please respect the house rules and that. Right, so thank you. Uh, we keep seeing your answers. Um, and, but my students, the thing is, I just get one student at a time saying one word, and I don't think that's good enough, okay? Uh, so because if you ask, what do you see? One student puts their hands up. What are the other students doing? Maybe not too much. So I want all of my students involved. So here are a few things you can do. First, I tend to, I don't ask students, what do you see? If I, if I want to ask them a question, I start with this question. Oh, look at picture one. Where are they? So can you type into the chat box? Um, where, are, where are they? In the living room. Okay, and this gets students. And uh, and who who are they? Are they teachers? Are they their two their kids? Their children? Hmm. And what are they doing? Or you can also say what's happening. What are they doing? Oh, you think they're sister and brother? See, interesting because th this gets us thinking about the context. So I tend to ask these questions first. Where? Who? And then what are they doing or what's happening? Okay. Um, so I ask these questions because um, it sets the context. And this relates to fluency. If you ask, what do you see? And a child says, balloon. They're focusing on a detail. If you ask, where are they? Who are they? What are they doing? You get the context or the situation. And that's important for fluency because it Part of being a fluent speaker or part of communicative competence is understanding what situation, what context you are in. Okay, so we can ask questions like that to set up the context first. Okay, so that's one tip. Uh, next, have groups of students brainstorm words they know. So instead of saying, what do you see? I say to my students, okay, what colors do you see? And I, and I say, in pairs or little groups of three, I want you to say to each other, all every color you can see in picture one, go. And can you type all the colors you see in picture one? So in class, my students would be shouting out to each other, oh, blue, uh, boy, window. Okay, and that's great. And now can you, oh, oh I said colors, right, sorry. So all the colors next, can you shout all the toys you see? Go, go, go. My students are sort of sh like talking to each other. What toys do you see? An elephant, car, and so on. Now, this is very, very simple, isn't it? But I want to, to show you how different this is from asking, what do you see? Because if you ask, what do you see? One student puts their hands up and they tell, or hand up and they tell you one word. But if you ask to, to say, what colors do you see? Go. Then students are suddenly saying many, many more words and they're, they're all looking every single part of the picture they're extracting much more language out of the picture okay and that's going to help them listening so you said you saw what what did you say red blue black elephant okay good so now we're going to play the audio and i want you to listen which of the words that you typed or you said if you're my students do you will you hear okay so sophia play the audio Listening, 85. So the words you typed, do Listen, you hear them point or not? and say. One. Blue, please. Two. Here you are, James. Thank you, Kate. 
Okay, and so what colors did you actually hear? Blue, right? So this is like something, so if you get students to guess as many words as they can in the picture, then, and you say, oh, let's see if we can hear, the, let's, let's hear, can do any of the words you said, will you hear them? Go. The students will all, they won't be like this. They'll be like this, listening, because they want to see if they, they got it. And if they hear, if they said blue for, before they listen and then they hear blue, they'll do this. Like, yes. Okay. So by doing this, you can motivate your students to pay more attention through listening. Okay. And again, I just think it's, it involves all the students much more than asking, what do you see? Okay. Next. Where are we? Oh, it, something that's a bit harder. So that was very easy. If you want to make it a bit harder, uh, you can ask students to predict what student what these characters will say. So what do you think they will say? What polite words will they say? What nice words? And then students can predict things like thank you and please. And then you can listen out for them. Okay. So you could do that if you want to focus on the everyday English more. Uh, and that would be more challenging. Okay. For students. So lots of different ways of doing things. So, um, so that's, that's about motivating all students to focus on the pictures. Next, we can do listening for fluency activities. So usually when students listen to something in a course book, they are listening for information. It's a listening comprehension task. So for example, um, you know, the question could be, what color do you hear? And students would listen and then they would say, oh, blue. And for listening, usually students say listen just to get the answer to a question. Now that that's for li listening for listening comprehension, but listening for fluency is a bit different because listening for fluency is not about listening to what people say, but it's more about listening to how they say it. And then you can copy how they say it to practice fluent speaking. So, you know, if, if you are, you know, how does he ask for the balloon? Oh, blue, please. Ah, and now I've learned blue, please, and I can say it. So that's there's a bit of a difference between listening for comprehension and listening for fluency. So what you can do with these, acti uh, I'm going to show you three activities which are listening for fluency. The first one, very simple, I'm just going to describe it as listen and point. So I'm not going to play the audio here, Sophia. So students listen and they point to what they hear. So it would be blue, please. Here you are. Thank you. Okay, so so that's a listening fluency activity. Can you guess what listening, can you guess what fluency skill that relates to? Very easy, just pointing to the person who's speaking. And I'll go over that afterwards. So that's activity one, very simple, just listen and point. Next is listen and act. So I want you to do this at your homes or wherever you are. I'm gonna play the audio and then I want you to act out the, the body language, the facial expression. Uh, you don't say anything. You just act out what the speaker's doing with their body. So uh, blue, please, you'd be doing this, right? Just like this boy. Are you ready? So Sophia, please press play, and we're going to act out what we hear. Listening, 85. Listen, point, and say. One. Blue, please. Two. Here you are, James. Thank you, Kate. Okay, something like that. All right, so that's another listening for fluency activity. And then a third one is, our, let me see, oh yeah, how many words. So what we're going to do this time is listen again. And I'm, I, Sophia, I will press play and pause, okay, for this one. We're going to listen and then I'm going to pause after each phrase, and you're going to tell me how many words did you see, did you hear, rather. Again, you can type the answer into the chat box. So here we go. Listening, 85. Listen, point, and say. One. Blue, please. So I would ask students, how many words? One, two, three. Most students say, oh, two, okay. Blue, please. That's right, too. You got it. Okay, let's move on to picture two. Two. Here you are, Jane. How many words? He 
here you are, James. It was for here you are, James, right? I'm not sure if I'm doing this in the right order for you because it's kind of a mirrored image I'm seeing, <laughs> right? But, uh, and you do this, here you are, James, to your students and your students can repeat it. Here you are, James, four words there. Okay, and next one. Thank you, Kate. How many words there? Three, yeah. Thank you, Kate. Okay, so that's uh, how many words. So um, let's, let's just move the audio back and let's just go over these. So uh, there's three very, very quick, simple activities and you can do these with large class sizes, no problem. So the first one was listen and point, just point to the characters. What fluency skill is that practicing? Is it word recognition? Is it understanding context? Or is it understanding meaning? I appreciate these two here understanding are very, very overlapped. Okay, I, I appreciate that because um, context and meaning are, are very closely linked, obviously. But listen and point, what would you say it is? Understanding, oh, and the, the, the chat history has been cleared. Okay, so I'm looking for your, uh, multiple attendees are typing. Context. Uh, Na Chan, I, 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 again, I apologize for mispronouncing your names, but um, it is context. Okay, that's right. I'm going to click because it's understand, you know, part of understanding the context is understanding who is saying what and why. And so that helps. Next, we had listen and act. So, you know, uh, blue, please. And you do this. What's that? So listen and act is understanding meaning. That's right. Because body language shows you, you, you do gestures to support your meaning, right? And so if you do the right gesture while you're listening to this, the language, it means you kind of understand the meaning of what's going on. And then finally, we have how many words? And obviously that is word recognition. Okay, because students, part of fluency is understanding which where a word ends and where a word starts. OK, so, um, you know, if you understand fluency skills, you can easily create very simple activities to focus on them. Now, I do want to say uh, what I'm doing here is, of course, I am, I am not saying you must do all these three activities every time you teach, you know, an exercise one in fluency time, everyday English. No, I'm showing you lots a few different activities you can do and in one lesson i will probably just do one of them all right but next time i do a fluency time lesson maybe i'll do a different one or a different one depending on what i feel you know makes sense for my class so hopefully what i'm doing here is giving you extra ideas and you can just choose oh, which one of these ideas do i want kind of like a menu of ideas oh and i'll use that in this lesson and so on okay so I'm giving you more activities and ideas than I would ever use in one lesson, I think. Next, we can we do controlled speaking practice, okay? So I'm gonna show you three activities you can use for to control speaking fluency practice. So again, I'm gonna use exercise one as my example, all right? Now, the younger and lower level our students are, the more time we have to spend doing very controlled speaking practice activities, okay? because students need to get down the pronunciation, the, the rhythm uh, in a controlled manner before they can be confident to, to speak more freely by themselves. So the first one is called silent mouthing. So what we're gonna do is, uh, Sophia, can we have the audio back please? I'm gonna pause as the teacher, I'm gonna pause after each phrase. Thank you, I'll, I'll, and Sophia, I will control the play button, okay? Because there's lots of pausing here. So I'll go like, and, and we're all going to silently mouth, no sound, but use our mouths to repeat what we heard. Listening 85. Listen, point, and say. One. Blue, please. Okay, and then the students would copy me and do that too. Two. Here you are, James. Three. 
the students copy me and Thank then... Thank you, Kate. Students copy me. Now, um, so this is, uh, this is about sound and enunciation. When you are not... Here's the thing. A lot of students are shy, right? And they're afraid of making mistakes when they speak. But if you say you don't have to speak, just be silent. Students become a lot more relaxed and they focus more on the shape of their mouth. And when you do that silently, in your brain, you're much more focused on what your mouth is doing. And you can kind of hear yourself inside your brain, right? And so it's a chance to practice the enunciation and mouth shape uh, required for English. Yeah, many children are shy. So if there's no pressure on them to produce sound, then they're much more comfortable, you know, um, speaking. It's a very, very nice transition, silent mouthing from listening to speaking, because it's like a rehearsal for speaking. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you want to, you could do something like this. So look at my mouth. What phrase am I saying? What did I just say? And then you're all looking at my mouth shape and probably copying me and you know it's blue, please. So it's a really nice focus on enunciation, okay? So uh, I do that a lot. I also, I think it's a very nice activity. Sometimes you're in a lesson and you look at your watch, you've got like two minutes left. What can you do? You can just, the teacher can do this. And then the students look and, and put their hands up and say, oh, teacher, thank you. So it's a very nice quick activity anytime in a lesson, focusing on um, enunciation. Or uh, Next, you could do chanting. So uh, I'm just going to talk about this quickly uh, to catch up with some on time. So uh, let's say, here you are, James, right? So we can chant it. Here you are, James, your turn. Here you are, James, and you do, here you are, James, here you are, James, here you are, James, and get faster and faster. So with chanting, start slow, because the rhythm, getting the rhythm and the stress syllables right is, is much more important than saying something quickly. If you get the rhythm right, you can use get it right, then you can go faster and faster, but keep with the right syllable stress. So for rhythm, I mean, you can help students to identify the stress syllables. So we have, here you are, James, here you are, James. And then I ask students, oh, which ones are stressed? And they will tell me, here, James, here you are, James, like that. And that helps them with their pronunciation as well and the rhythm of English. So next we have body language. So very similar to the listening activity, students must do the body language and and repeat so they've just you play the the cd track and you the students hear blue please and students all must do the body language and speak blue please and then you know here you are james and students say here you are james and so on right now the i find body language very interesting not just to support meaning but here's here's another thing i i suspect from my experience that many of your students right they will speak english a bit like this here you are james right here you are james do you get that very kind of robotic sound for for many students and there are reasons for that partly it's when every, when you get 30 or 40 students speaking together they all do that Partly it's to do with the, the rhythm of Vietnamese, I think, being a syllable time language and English being a stress time language. So, um, okay, something. Uh, in, uh, so, so, yeah, do that. So, but when you, if you do this, there's a much greater chance. It's hard to do. Here you are, James. If if you use your body, here you are, James. It helps your intonation to become better. It puts so gestures put life into language and they somehow magically make our voices intonate with more emotion okay try try doing if you smile you will sound happier if you do this argh, angry oh you, you will it'll make your voice sound angrier okay so use body language to focus on intonation so let's quickly go over this so we have silent mouthing which of these uh, fluency skills to silent mouthing develop? Is it R for rhythm, speed, connected speech? Is it S for sound or enunciation? Is it 
M for meaning and intonation. So silent mouthing focuses on sound enunciation. That's right. You got it. Well done. Chanting. What does chanting help to develop? Which fluency skills? It's one of these rhythm speed uh, rhythm and speed and connected speech so it's not here you are james it's here you are james connecting the words together that's right and then obviously um body language as i've just said is about supporting meaning but also intonation here you are james no use the body here you are james right okay or whatever okay so we have just done um, six fluency activities. We've done three listening for fluency. Oh, I can't even count. And three speaking fluency activities, which uh, Sophia is going to put a poll up, right? And I want you to choose th your three favorite activities uh, from the poll. Okay, so Sophia, if you can, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll just do this. Okay. So just choose three, which three activities from these six did you find the most useful for your teaching situation? Nice to see that every activity is getting, uh, I would feel a bit sad if one of the activities got nothing. I'll give you another 10 seconds. If you're on a tablet, you cannot see the poll, but you can type the letters. Right, but the poll is, someone chose all, all six, right? You want six out of three activities are useful. Right? So that's 200% usefulness of these activities. Okay, and Sophia, let's publish the poll, please. Can you broadcast the results? Excellent, and can everyone see those or do you have to move them into, can you all see the results? I'm not sure. Right, so we have, Oh, it's still going on. It's a neck and neck race between, oh, I think A is the winner, maybe because it's at the top, to be honest. And then we have F, body language. Okay. And then we have it in third. Oh, also in the 50s, we have listen and act. Okay. So we see, but all of them seem useful to you. Thank you, Sophia. End the poll. Yes, so yeah, when there's a poll, if you have a laptop or a computer, use the poll, not the chat window. But for people on mobiles, yeah, you cannot see polls, so you could type into the chat window. Okay, great. So let's move on to part two, and I'll have to speed up now, because we have about 10 minutes left. Uh, so students listen and point to parts of the picture to show understanding of a new language. Okay, so uh, in part two, uh, I'm gonna move go a bit more quickly on this. Uh, students do this, they point to the picture, uh, so, um, and then the teacher asks this class, what can they see? So, oh, what can you see? Of course, you could do the same sorts of activities I did for exercise one, right? Uh, what colors do you see? Brainstorming. What? How many people do you see? Where are they? That sort of thing. So after you do, after you do that, the teacher says, let's point. Okay, I want to see those fingers. Let's point and you play the audio for children to point at the correct part of the picture. So let's do that, because you'll see this is more difficult than, than exercise one. Sophia, can you play track 86, please? Listening 86. Listen and point. One. Red, please. Here you are. Thank you. L listening. 86. Listen and point. 1. Red, please. Here you are. L listening. 86. <laughs> Listen <laughs> and point. We're giving students a, a triple practice here. I'm not sure One. why. But... Red, please. Here you are. Thank you. 2. Green you're apple, just listening please. and pointing. Here you are. Thank you. Three. What color? Blue, please. Here you are. Thank you. Four. Black, please. Here you are. Thank you. 
OK, so students really have to listen and connect what they hear to the pictures, right? And there's, there's lots more examples of the, the everyday English language phrases there being polite. OK, and then you, you, what you can do is then play the, the track again. I won't do this to save time, but it's, it's pretty easy to understand. You pause after each of the four dialogues. So you play number one, which is this. The, uh, the first dialogue, you, then you pause, and then you just, as a teacher, make sure that every child is pointing at the correct picture, and maybe play it again. So they're getting lots of, uh, of nice exposure here. So let's see. Oh, OK. Right. Uh, so, oh, so Sophia, I can hear. Is that your mic on? Sophia, I can hear. Is that your mic on? Suddenly sound like I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly yeah. sound like yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. If someone got their mic, so can turn it off. If someone got their mic, on, they can turn it off. Oh well, let's see. Let's see. I'm getting a funny echo of myself. I'm getting a funny echo of so, myself. Um, I hope you can so, still hear me. Um, I hope you can so, still hear me. So, can someone? Yeah, someone else. Can someone? Yeah, someone else. Please turn it on. Do you also hear an echo? Turn it on. Do you also hear an echo? Have to ignore it. Okay. And ignore speak. it. Okay. And speak. So, uh, listening so, for food, you can uh, do the activities I suggested for part one. Suggested then when you finish one. exercise two, you finish just tell exercise the students now that you have now heard a you have heard. language, you will have a chance to practice it in exercise three. Okay, and then we move on. Okay, so let's move on to exercise three. Ah, good. I'm not getting a strange echo. Yes, it, the echo is gone. Very hard to concentrate uh, with an echo. All right. Good. Uh, so, exercise three. Pairs of students practice the phrases applying the context from exercise one. Okay, so, you know, students can simply do what's in the book. Um, and But I'm going to show you a few activities to make this practice a bit more varied and meaningful and lively and fun and motivating. So first, uh, the, the, here's how you set it up. I don't say to my students, okay, go and go into pairs, do this, go. No, we have to build up, okay? And we build up like this. So first, the, I, I, the teacher can play the, the track or, or the teacher can read the speech bubbles. And the students, what they do is simply point to the words on, they have their student books open. So green, please. And the students are pointing to green, please, in the speech bubbles. Here you are, here you are, thank you. So the students listen and point to the words. Next, they listen again, but this time they point to the correct picture in, the, in, the, in exercise two. So it's this one, green, please. So green, please. Here you are. Thank you. So that you can see my pointer. That's where the students are pointing with their fingers. OK, good. Now the teacher can say, if, if I say blue, please, my students then point. Blue, please, which, which conversation is it in, in exercise two's picture? Oh, here, blue, please. And then the teacher can read blue, please. Here you are. Thank you. And do that again. And then we can do, I, I can point to say this picture here, and I can ask my students, what do you think they're saying? And the students tell me, black please, here you are, thank you. So you see how we're building from listening to speaking, right? And the students get lots of examples of understanding first. And now what we, would, we can do is we're ready to practice speaking and practice in pairs. So there are different ways we can do this. The, te in, the students get into pairs, the teacher can point to say, oh, look, blue, blue, go. So the teacher points to a picture in the book. So the students can point to a picture in the, in the book, and then they practice in pairs. Blue, please, here you are, thank you. And they can use body language as well. And then the students can find another picture. Ah, black, please, here you are, thank you. And they can switch roles. Black, please, here you are, thank you. So you can just practice with the students looking at pictures in the book and applying the language into those contexts. Or the teacher can hold up flashcards. I don't have flashcards, but the teacher could do this, hold up a green pen, and then students have to say, or green flashcard, then the students do, green please, here you are, thank you. Then the teacher holds up another card, and the students practice, red please, here you are, thank you. You can do it that way. Or you can, you know, if your students, if you think they have more freedom, you can prepare lots of bits of colored paper or lots of crayons, 
and you give pairs of students, oh, you two, I'm giving you a blue pen, you two, I'm going to give you a black pen, and then the students practice on their own. Oh, black, please. Here you are. Thank you. And then the, group, the pairs of students switch pens with each other. Red, please. Here you are. Thank you. So many ways to do this in class, right? Either using the pictures in the book or, you know, the teacher showing colors, lots of different ways. So I'm going to show, if, this is the last kind of little block here. So sorry for running over time a, a bit, but I just want to show you three other ways you can practice pair work speaking. And all of these combine all fluency skills into what is discourse, right? Fluent speaking. So we have step across lines. So in step across lines, the students stand in two rows facing each other. Okay, so this student is, to, is with facing this student. And the teacher has to show you must look at each other's eyes because part of communicative competence is eye contact. Eye contact. Okay, there we go. Um, not that close. Not uh, Okay, two meters, right? COVID-19. Uh, and the teacher has a flashcard, yellow. And so, you know, the student, yellow, please. Here you are. And they use body language. Thank you. And when that's done, this student here moves across to this side and, and the, the students go boom, 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 they move down. And this student here moves across to this side, steps across the lines, right? And then all the students, in, in my classes, that my students, I would just say boom, boom, boom. And the students go boom, 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 boom. And then they have a new partner and a new color comes up. So, uh, you know, blue, please, here you are. Thank you, boom, 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 boom. Students move. Red, please, here you are, thank you. And because the students will move across lines, they will practice both, you know, both um, roles in the dialogue. So that's step across lines. If you want, if you have shy students who speak too quietly, each time, each new round, they step back one pace. So they're eventually quite far away from each other and have to use a loud voice. Uh, slow arrays. So this is where the teacher writes a dialogue on the whiteboard and the pairs of students practice together. Green, please. Here you are. Thank you. Green, please. Here you are. Thank you. And then the teacher erases a word. The students must remember it. Green, please. Here you are. Thank you. Green, please. Here you are. Thank you. And the teacher keeps erasing words and the students have to keep. Eventually, the teacher erases all or most of the words and the students are committing this dialogue, this language to memory. Green, please. Here you are. Thank you. And so on and so on. You can make it as easy or difficult as you like. And then the teacher can change colors. Yellow, please. Here you are. Thank you. Um, blue, please. And so on. Yep. In some schools, there's not enough space in public schools for students to stand up. I appreciate that. But you know what? You can still get students who are sitting down at desks to kind of, so a teacher's commented that there's not enough space. You can still turn around, turn around to the person on your right, turn to the person on your left, even in your chair, turn to the person in front of you, turn around to the person behind you. you it's, it's not as, as spacious and there's not as much movement, but you can still adapt these activities to, to large classrooms. And then uh, finally, find your partner. Uh, and then this is the last activity we'll do, looking at the time. So we have a dialogue. Now I'm going to secretly choose an emotion, uh, but I'm not going to tell you my emotion. And Sophia, I'm going to ask you to secretly choose an emotion too, all right? Don't tell me. I want to hear your emotion being acted out. So if I choose cold, I would do this. <laughs> Green, please. All right. And let's see. Okay, I've got one. Sophia, are you ready? Mm, I'm ready. So, we, you know, I, we, st we stand up ideally or turn to a partner. And I'm going to do this. <laughs> Green, please. Here you are. Thank you. Now, were our emotions, and we could switch roles as well and do it again. Were our emotions the same, do you think, Sophia and I? I don't think so, right? I was angry. Shh, but don't tell her yet. Um, and what was Sophia? Uh, so, uh, right, but we didn't have the same emotions. So we have to switch partners and I keep going with a different partner, a different student until I find another student who I think, oh, I think you have the same emotion as me. We're both angry. Yay. And then we go to the front and tell the teacher. Okay. 
uh, and then Sophia will do the same. So this is nice because a part of language learning is repeating. Practice makes perfect. Students can often find it boring to repeat, but because they're acting emotions, they find it fun. Okay. What, well, Sophia, were you tired or, I, or, or hot? Are you either hot or tired? Sophia was, yeah. Well, it's a mystery, you know. Well, uh, was she hot or was she tired? Oh, she was bored. Okay. So it, if she was acting in class, she'd kind of go, uh, something like that. Okay. Sorry you were bored, Sophia. <laughs> I'll try harder to keep you interested. Okay. So three quick activities there. Um, all right. So you've seen the shape of a lesson. We've moved from listening, listening to controlled speaking practice to pair work speaking practice. That's it. Uh, okay. And now at the teaching notes, we'll give you um, below level, at level, above level activities, you know. Um, Below level, drill the mini dialogue several times. It's more, you know, more um, controlled practice. And above level is going to have more switching, more changing the words, right? Not just saying blue, please, but a drink, please, an apple, please, that kind of thing. So there's lots of differentiation support in the teacher's notes. And of course, the teacher's notes will very clearly tell you your objectives for the everyday English lesson and any lesson in family and friends. Did we learn the value of being polite? Yes, we did. Did we use everyday English expressions to be polite? To be polite, we did. Please and thank you and so on. All of the language and resources we need right there. Okay. Okay. So we've completed the lesson. Warmer lead in exercises one, two, and three. Well done. And we'll conclude by hearing from an expert on communicative language teaching, Professor Jack C. Richards. Okay. He's, he's an author, not for family and friends, but for other Oxford series. And he says that something is the single most important factor in developing confident and fluent speaking. What is it? I'll tell you. Time spent on speaking tasks. So in the new edition of Family and Friends, we give you more time spent on speaking tasks to produce more fluent speakers in Vietnam. Okay, more sp fluent speakers of English. So... Um, that's that's the end. Everyone, thank you very, very much. Uh, if you have any questions, I can try to answer them, but I, I, I see that there are no questions I see. Uh, and, it, you know, um, let us know, what's your favorite idea of acti or activity from today's webinar? Please feel free to type an answer. Okay, if you have a favorite activity. And uh, what I'll do is I will just say thank you very, very much. Right, being polite and sincere. Thank you very, very much for sticking with us through the, the Saturday morning. Thank you all teachers in Vietnam. And I will now, well, we've done that. We've done the methodology talk. You've done the demo lesson walkthrough of fluency time. And if you have any questions, I'll type answers. Okay, and we can come back to you. But let me say peace out. Thank you very much. Sophia, over to you. Thank you very much, Mark, for your presentation. Uh, cảm ơn Mark rất nhiều về buổi thuyết trình. Uh, chúng tôi cũng gửi lời cảm ơn quý thầy cô đã tham gia buổi hội thảo trực tuyến ngày hôm nay và hy vọng nội dung bài chia sẻ sẽ giúp quý thầy cô trong công tác giảng dạy của mình uh, trong quá trình thực hiện hội thảo không tránh khỏi những thiếu sót. Chúng tôi rất mong nhận được sự thông cảm từ quý thầy cô. Uh, nhà xuất bản đọc Oxford rất mong được đón tiếp quý thầy cô trong các buổi hội thảo trực tuyến sắp tới. Uh, trong vài ngày tới, chúng tôi sẽ gửi đến uh, email của quý thầy cô các nội dung của buổi hội thảo trực tuyến ngày hôm nay như file thuyết trình, bản ghi âm, ghi hình của buổi hội thảo, giấy chứng nhận cũng như các tài liệu tương ứng để quý thầy cô có thể tiện xem lại khi cần. À, trong email cũng có thêm các thông tin về các buổi hội thảo trực tuyến sắp tới của nhà xuất bản tại học Oxford. Như trên màn hình là thông tin của buổi hội thảo trực tuyến tiếp theo trong chuỗi hội thảo tiếng Anh một Family and Friends National Edition. Rất mong được đón tiếp quý thầy cô. Quý thầy cô cũng có thể kết nối với chúng tôi qua kênh Facebook được cập nhật 
để được cập nhật các thông tin mới nhất về tài liệu cũng như kinh nghiệm giảng dạy tiếng Anh. À, sau cùng, phản hồi của quý thầy cô rất quan trọng để chúng tôi có thể hoàn thiện và đem lại những trải nghiệm tốt nhất đến quý thầy cô ở các buổi hội thảo trực tuyến sắp tới. Do đó, rất mong quý thầy cô có thể dành thêm 3 phút để hoàn thành link khảo sát đang hiện ra trên màn hình hoặc trong cửa sổ chat. Phòng hội thảo trực tuyến sẽ được duy trì trong vòng 10 phút tiếp theo. À, tôi vẫn ở đây để hỗ trợ quý thầy cô. Sau 10 phút, phòng hội thảo sẽ đóng. À, quý thầy cô có thể rời phòng hội thảo ngay lúc này bằng cách đóng trình duyệt hoặc thoát ứng dụng. Tôi xin phép tắt camera và tiếp tục được hỗ trợ tại cửa sổ chat. Một lần nữa, rất cảm ơn quý thầy cô đã tham dự và ước mong được đón tiếp quý thầy cô ở các buổi hội thảo trực tuyến sắp tới của nhà xuất bản Đại học Oxford. Xin chào và tạm biệt.